Hi, I'm Sean. This is Shani Reads. I wanted to do a few little videos about um, backlist books that kind of link together a little bit. So I've got three books which have a kind of link between them, and they're all books which have elements of fantasy, or elements of sci-fi in them. And um, I'm not, I don't do hugely well with like pure adult fantasy or sci-fi. I I can probably manage a young adult fantasy, but I'm more I like more books where um, you start off maybe in this real world and you're kind of led gently into some other world. Maybe like how Holly Black does with her like fairy world or maybe a little bit like Alice Hoffman with her kind of elements of magic as well. Or maybe even um, Angela Carter I can cope with as well where she's kind of more kind of magical realism and fairy tales. So those are all fine but like straight sci-fi, straight fantasy I'm not so great with. I'd like to be, but that's that's just how it is. So I've got three which kind of have elements of um, fantasy sci-fi in them. Two of them are dystopias. One of them is one that I'm sure you all know, it's a Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I read this one when it came out. I think this copy was like a free copy. I don't know if I'd have maybe got it otherwise, um, but I loved it. I liked how, mainly I loved the beginning. So I think the beginning, it has a really beautiful imagery about um, a production of King Lear and at the beginning the guy playing King Lear dies and there's fake snow falling on him um, and then when they go outside of the theatre there's real snow and there's something about that fake snow and that real snow that was really beautiful and that's the bit that's mainly stuck out for me because it's been a little uh, while since I read it so I can't remember like details but that bit is really clear in my mind and the other bit that really remained with me was that um, I know there's a stuff about a kind of comic book thing but also the bit that stuck with me was that um, how important things like theatre are um, in times of when everything else is awful about how you need art and you need theatre and you need books to kind of live again I guess or to start so it has that feeling at the end that we're kind of starting again and I, I really enjoyed that element to it so that's that one the other one I've got is also a dystopian novel, which is California by Eden Lepucky. And this one isn't quite as hopeful as um, the Emily St. John Mandel one. This one has much more... When we start the book, I think we're pretty much into the dystopian life already, although it does kind of flash back to uh, a previous times. But this one is much more... Um, yeah, it's, it's less hopeful. There's a, a real kind of dark undercurrent to it. It also has a kind of slight sort of... Um, commune feel to it with uh, kind of like corrupt uh, leader type people in it um, and it's much more kind of trying to survive as well and it's mainly about a couple and I think they've got a child too and how they're trying to get through this and I don't think the guy is great. <laughs> the thing, I love the writing style though of Eden Lepucky, um, the thing that stuck out with me in this one is that they flash back to um, when the guy's in college and they had this group in college and when they would agree with things rather than clapping what they would do is just make a kind of silent knock a bit like that and I just love that and while I was reading this um, for quite a while afterwards I would just if I agreed to something at home I'd be like um, which wasn't annoying I don't think and um, interestingly as well so there's that one she also wrote woman number 17 uh, much more recently, which isn't a dystopia or anything. Um, it's a really great book, I think, about um, a, a woman who's divorced and she's got two children and there's like photography and art and amazingness, but we're not really talking about that. But in this one, um, the there's a, a teenager in this who doesn't speak and him and his mother have um, in, invented like a, a sign language between them and it just sort of reminded me of this bit, that kind of... I don't know, there was something that, that stuck out about the sort of hand gestures as well that turned up in both books. I thought that was interesting. Um, but that's that one. I loved that one too. And then the third one I've got is not a dystopia. It's Among Others by Joe Walton. And Joe Walton is a... I've read this twice. I love this one. Joe Walton was born in Wales and I think she now lives in Canada. And her other books look much more um, kind of pure fantasy. I haven't read any other ones so I don't really know. But I know there's one about dragons. But this one is set in, um, it's one of the ones, like I was saying, where it's like a mix of everyday and kind of um, fantasy. So it's set in 1970s and it's about um, a child called Morwenna and she's got a twin sister and um, uh, there's, this, there's this event that happens where her twin sister dies and her mother, I think, is... is um, harmed but I think I don't I can't remember what happens to another but she goes and I think the 
because of that, Morwenna then is sent away to a school which isn't in Wales, like a boarding school by her father, who she doesn't really know. Um, the kind of fantasy sci-fi-ish element is that she can see fairies, and fairies aren't necessarily kind of, well they never are, but they're not like nice beings, there's something, and she has to kind of placate these fairies. But you're not 100% sure if the fairies are real, or if it's because of this trauma that's happened. Um, so there's that element to it, which is great. Alongside that though, there's this, it's all about reading. So there's this absolute love of childhood reading and reading sci-fi and reading fantasy. And she um, starts getting into these books and her dad will send her some money to buy books. Her dad's a bit weird, so don't get too excited about the dad. He'll send money to buy the books. And then also she um, goes to this nearby town and the library and she finds this sci-fi um, reading group and she starts going there. And there's just like lists of all the different books that she reads. Um, I was so kind of caught up with it, it made me try some Ursula Le Guin, which I didn't care for. But I, you know, it made me want to read sci-fi fantasy. So she talks about, like, there's like, even on the first few pages, there's like Anne McCaffrey, um, Ursula Le Guin, who else does she talk about? Um, there's like Lord of the Rings, so kind of sort of standardy stuff and stuff from the 70s. Um, yeah, Mary Rennell. It's really good. Um, my <laughs> my one thing is though, if you speak Welsh, which I do, um, know that the Welsh she puts in it isn't really correct. I couldn't find it to to tell you what's wrong with it, but it's not. Just just in case that kind of thing bothers you. Um, but I just adored this book. Uh, if you've read any of the other ones, I'm wondering if you could let me know if you think I'd like them. And if you haven't read it, have a go. It won the Hugo Award winner and it was a Nebula Award winner and I'm sure those are really important things. So those are my three kind of backlist, slightly fantasy, slightly sci-fi, also briefly mentioned uh, Woman Number 17. Let me know if you read them, let me know of any books that you think would kind of fit into this theme, I'd be super up for reading them. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon. Thank you so much.